Then everything happened very quickly and almost at once. The windows broke inwards, shards of glass flying through the air, showering the floor in furniture. Something heavy slammed into the front door and the back one, sending both crashing to the ground as dark figures came streaming through and Smith found himself grinning. A single candle had been left burning on the bedside table and now it died with a gust of cold wind and the house was dark. Five pouring in from the front, five more from the back and there'd be others outside by now forming a ring around the house. They wanted him badly. He was almost flattered. And they wanted him alive, which was an advantage. He killed the first one with a knife thrust, holding the body gently as it dropped down to the floor. Black clad, armed, he took the man's gun out of its holster, admiring its lightness, and fired once, twice, three times, and watched two of them fall, one rolling away. When they fired back, destroying the bedroom, he was no longer there. He worried about his library, but there was nothing he could do. He came on two more of them there and killed the first one by breaking his neck, twisting it with a gentle nostalgia, then dropped the corpse to the floor, and the second one turned, and with the same motion, Smith flipped the knife and sent it flying. He went to retrieve it, pulling it out of the man's chest. Smith straightened. He couldn't take them all. In der Bibliothek. Two more bullets. A man dropped at the open door. Warten Sie. Wait. Mr. Smith. The voice came from beyond the door, a voice in shadows. Yeah. You come with us now, Mr. Smith. No more play. The voice spoke good English, but accented. It was young like the others. A fully trained extraction team, but too young, and they did things differently these days. Don't shoot. You are lit for an appointment arranged a long time ago. Smith smiled. Take them. There was the sudden sound of gunfire outside. Heavy gunfire. Smith ran, jumped, dived out of the broken window. The whistle of something flying through the air, entering the room he had just vacated. He rolled and covered his head. And there was a booming thunder as he felt fragments of wood and stone hit his back and his legs, and the night became bright momentarily. When it was over, he raised his head, looked. The old lady from M's, the lace and china shop, was standing with her hair on edge. A manic grin spread across her face. She was holding the controls of a giant mounted Gatling gun, a small steam engine belching beside it. Take one for the Kaiser! A torrent of bullets exploded out of the machine like angry bees, tracer bullets lighting up the night sky as M screamed soundlessly and fired, mowing the black cloth attackers as though they were unruly grass. Spies, Smith thought, trying to make himself as small as possible. They'll take any excuse to let their hair down. The firing stopped, and then someone was beside him, grabbing him. He turned and saw Verloc from the bookshop, grinning at him. The first time, perhaps, he had ever seen him look happy. Come on! He pulled Smith, who stood up and followed him. The two men ran across the cabbage patch, over what was left of the fence, which wasn't much, and into the field beyond. Smith could hear a second round of shooting. His poor house. Number six would never be the same again after this. He should have taken care of this business on his own. Well, too late now. Turning, he saw Colonel Crichton, the Baroness by his side, going through the garden and into the house. The colonel armed with a curved kukuri knife, the baroness less ostentatiously with a couple of small caliber elegant handguns, one in each hand. He raised his head and saw floating above the house a long graceful black shape, an airship. Don't let it get away. Shall we? <laughs> yeah, let's. 